Here's the MacBook Air 2017. This is an i7 16, no, eight gigabytes of RAM. And I had said in previous videos that if you are a writer, you're a blogger, screenwriter, you a, play, a playwright, poetry, all you do is write, this 2017 MacBook Air, which is the same sort of body design as the 2015, so the 2015 to the 2017 MacBook Air is the best laptop for writers. And I still stand by that. And if you don't want, want to watch that other video, I'll summarize why I think it is the best for uh, writers. Is that, first of all, if you're a Mac user, that's the first thing you have to be a Mac user if you if you if you're a PC person then yeah you're not you're not gonna like this for other reasons but for Mac users so uh, some of the, the the things that make the MacBook Air 2017 so good is that the ports you still have a mag safe where it's magnetic for the power and you can pop them on and off and and not worry about it taking the whole laptop with you if you're at a cafe you have USB 3.0. You have one there and one here. You have Thunderbolt 2. And Thunderbolt 2, there's a lot of adapters still that, that adapts to anything. And the SD card slot, which was really huge loss when MacBook, when the Macs got rid of the uh, SD card slot. You also have, a, I think, one of the better keyboards. This keep this chick chick keyboard thing here. I, I like the way it's how it's spread out, and I like the feel of it, and I like how this just types. It's one of the best Mac keyboards that I've used, uh, and also this was a drawback for uh, for a lot of people, but I see it as an advantage, which is the screen here. The screen is not as good high resolution as other Macs and or even even in its day it, it wasn't the best it had an old screen technology but what that allowed for was more privacy so for writers when you're writing in cafes or you're on an airplane my argument was that you don't want other people looking at your screen so when you have the screen at certain angles it was it's hard to see exactly what you're typing Whereas if you had a higher resolution screen with a more uh, broad uh, viewing angles, which is good for certain circumstances, but when it comes to the privacy part and you're a writer, you don't want to be on an airplane and the person sitting right across from you, uh, behind you, sees everything that you're typing. I, at least for me, I get paranoid about that and I don't like that. And with this lower resolution screen, you had that. If you noticed a lot of store, a lot of, uh, uh, companies are making privacy screens where when you, you it's it's this external thing you, you put on your screen and it prevents people from looking at your screen from different viewing angles unless you're directly on it so so there's a reason for that because people don't like that people like me people are paranoid that are like me they don't like that and the last reason why I really am a champion of this model is the battery life Again, when you're a writer, you're on a coffee shop, you're, you're, you're traveling, and with the battery life of this computer, you get up to 12 hours. 12 hours of battery life, uh, maybe even more, depending on what you do. If you uh, lower the brightness, if you do certain things, you can get even more than 12. But when, over time, the battery goes lower, uh, it loses capacity, a solid tw 10 to 12 hours that lasts almost a whole plane ride uh, unless you're going around the world. But uh, I, for all those reasons, I really loved the MacBook Air and I swore by it when I'm writing. But I ended up having to need other things from my computer, not just writing. And I sold out, I, I bought the MacBook Pro 13 inch 2020. Oh, this has a under, it says a cover case on the bottom and it has a case on the bottom. And I am pleasantly surprised with the MacBook 2020 13 inch. Uh, the first thing that I'm very surprised at is the size. 
I had thought the, well, there's the MacBook that's really small, but I had thought the Air was really small until I just bought this one. And if you can see the size difference, I'm going to put it right on top of each other. I'm gonna line it up, so there you go. Maybe you could see it like that way. So if you can see, I, I have the other corners lined up. Look how much bigger the Air is in comparison to the MacBook Pro. Not with the width. With the width, it's comparable. They're almost the same size, but look at how much smaller the Pro is. I, I, I didn't know that. And I haven't seen anybody else compare these two. Uh, like, why would you? They're, they're, they're so different, apples to oranges. But uh, I didn't see it. I wasn't aware of it. And I, I can't tell by when, when you, you they have the measurements. I just don't, I need to see it. I need to feel it myself. I don't know if you're like, you're the same way I am, but I need it in front of me. I need to feel it. That's just different from when I'm reading it on a screen. But I was surprised in how thin and small the Pro is, but then how powerful it is. So the reason why I got the Pro is that I started to do more uh, on location photo editing and a little bit of video editing. And that required more power and that's why i upgraded that's the main reason because i'm starting to travel now more things are opening up and i'm getting more jobs now so i need more of a production laptop rather than a straight up writing laptop and the reason why i also got the 13 the 2020 version is the keyboard is the this new magic keyboard so i didn't like the older model of this it, it was kind of I, I didn't like the way it felt. This is a little different still to the MacBook Air. I do notice a difference. I do notice a difference in, in keyboard, the feel of it. It's also, if you can see here, this screen, uh, this keyboard is more compressed and this one is spread open. I like the ones that are spread open uh, just because I, I like the, 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 the play of it. But this one's nice. I, I can see why People are liking this new Magic Keyboard. It's a good evolution from what the old, ver the previous version was, and then the two, the, the 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 two versions down was. So it's a good compromise. It's a, it's a good in the right direction, I think. Uh, but I still like the this keyboard better. Uh, the big thing is the screen's better too. You know, this is a much better screen. So when I'm doing photography or video editing, more accuracy in the screen. Then when it comes to audio, the MacBook Pro's audio is fantastic. Uh, it, it's like having a separate Bluetooth uh, audio speakers, and the audio in the MacBook Air is terrible. So when I'm playing videos and I'm just listening to music, the MacBook Pro, excellent, excellent speakers for its size. But you do lose the ports. So I only ha I have four of the USB-C Thunderbolt ports. Uh, oh, and this is the uh, 10th gen version. This is the 10th gen Intel chip version. i7, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM. I, I, I got like the top of the line. Uh, it has two terabytes. Uh, it could go up to four, but I, got, I maxed it out at two. So this is not the highest, but second highest, second to the highest uh, MacBook Pro 13 2020 you can get. With this Air, I did something that you, could, you can't do with the new MacBook Pros. And this is another reason that if you're just a straight writer, you, it's still good. I think it's still good to get this 2017 MacBook Air because you can upgrade components inside the, uh, inside the Air that you can't do to the Pro because it's too new and other third parties can't do it. Like OWC is a good third party manufacturer that provides upgraded uh, pieces to it. So for example, for this Air, I upgraded the 512 gigabyte SSD hard drive. I upgraded to two terabytes. So I have two terabytes in this 2017 MacBook Air and it's the same storage as the MacBook Pro. And I was done cheaper. And I, I think you can also, swap out the battery or, or have that done or it's just easier to do in the air so i also recommend buying used 
and then upgrading the internal components and either taking it to a, a, a place to, to have it set up for you or doing it yourself. And you get a pretty robust machine for writing, just for writing. But then once you're like me and you have to use your computer for other tasks and you need it to be more of a production laptop, I just had to do the MacBook Pro. So those are a, com a very strange comparison. No nobody's comparing these two. But as a writer who's also doing other mixed media, MacBook Pro 2020 is the way to go. I'm already impressed with the size. And uh, it's uh, as far when it comes to battery life, which is the main reason why I like the Air, you do lose a couple hours. The max battery life on the MacBook uh, Pro 13 2020 is 10 hours. But then people, I, I've seen other battery tests in real world performances, and it's it's more like eight. So it's more like eight to 10 hours you get with the MacBook Pro when you're doing straight writing. When it's editing video or photos, I think it goes even lower than eight hours. But the Air, it's still a solid 12 hours. And if the battery is a little old, 10 hours. So even with a little old battery, it's still getting more life than the MacBook Pro 13 2020. So my conclusion is writers, you should still get the MacBook Air 2017. I still love this computer for straight writing. But then once you want to do other stuff, yeah, get, the Pro is the direction where you should consider. If you have the money, this was three grand, this was 1500 